Hey, good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry, and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. We are continuing in our series on the transition between two covenants in the first century. And we are looking specifically at Galatians chapter 3, which powerfully demonstrates, uh, really the entire book of Galatians, which demonstrates that the Abrahamic inter- inheritance was in fact being received in the first century and would be fully received when the new covenant was established and the old was cast out. So we'll get there, but we got to take our time just a little bit. Okay, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 4, we set the context by uh, by that verse. Galatians 1 4 says, God uh, in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from the then present evil age. That evil age is not 2018. That evil age that Jesus died to rescue them from was the old covenant age. The, the, the age under of Moses, which could never bring them righteousness, it could never bring them perfection, and it could never bring them their true inheritance in Jesus Christ. Okay? So they had to be rescued from that, and how they were being rescued through that was through faith in Christ and through the working of the Holy Spirit in the first century. Now, let's just jump into Galatians chapter 3 and 13 and 14. I want to parallel this text with Galatians 1, 4, and it will give us a better idea of what what that rescue from the then-present evil age meant. Galatians 3 and 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us. For it is written, everyone, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, first of all, please understand that the blessing of Abraham is the promise of the Spirit. They're not two different, one's not the blessing of Abraham and and one's not the the the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The blessing of Abraham was promised by or through the Spirit. That's why it's the promise of the Spirit. Okay? So watch this, though. I want to parallel this in Galatians chapter 1. Jesus died in order that they would receive the blessing of Abraham. Okay? He redeemed them from the curse of the law. That's his death. To, so that they would receive the blessing of Abraham. But Galatians 1 4, and set, 1 4 says, He gave himself for their sins, that's the death of Christ, in order to rescue them from the then present evil age. So watch this. Jesus died to rescue them from the then present evil age, but Jesus died so that they would receive the blessing of Abraham. Therefore, the blessing of Abraham would be their rescue from the then present evil age. And by res- being rescued from the then present evil age, they would be receiving the, the promise and the blessing of Abraham. Are you with me? They're one and the same. So let's jump down here and continue in Galatians chapter through 3. Remember, Jesus redeemed them through his death from the curse of the law so that they would receive the blessing of Abraham. Verse 16. Now the promises, the promise of the blessing made to Abraham, promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. And he does not say as to seeds as referring to many, but rather to one and to your seed that is Christ. So this blessing in Abraham was to be found in his seed, Jesus Christ. It wasn't to be found in the by being a genealogical or a, a flesh descendant of Abraham. It was to be found in in the spiritual seed who was a physical descendant of Abraham. Let's go on. The promises were made in, uh, and spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say to seeds, referring as to many, but rather to one and to your seed, that is Christ. What I am saying is this. The law, which came 430 years later, does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God as to nullify the promise. So simply... The law that the Judaizers were trying to enforce upon Gentile Christians, Paul says, look it, the law doesn't uh, nullify the promise. 
the blessing of Abraham is to come by promise. And it comes through Jesus Christ because he is the seed of Abraham. Watch this. For if the inheritance is based on law, it is no longer based on promise. But God has granted it to Abraham by means of a promise. Guys, please catch what Paul just did. Paul just told us that the blessing of Abraham is the inheritance which was promised. Okay? He, he, he parallels these two things and he interchanges the words. Watch this. Verse 17. What I'm saying is this. The law which came 430 years later does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God as to nullify the promise, the blessing of Abraham. For if the inheritance is based on law, it is no longer based on promise. But God has granted to it to Abraham by means of a promise. So the blessing of Abraham was given to Abraham by a promise. But it's the inheritance that was given to Abraham by promise. Guys, the blessing of Abraham is the inheritance. It's his inheritance. So this is what we have. Jesus Christ died to, re to rescue them from the then present evil age. Jesus died to give them the blessing of Abraham. But the blessing of Abraham is the inheritance. Therefore, to be rescued from the then present evil age would be to receive the Abrahamic inheritance in Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham. But guys, we know, based on our studies, that the, inha the, the inheritance was not fully received at this time. Galatians 1 and 13 and 14 says that the Holy Spirit was given as a pledge, an erebon, a guarantee or a down payment of the inheritance. So if the inheritance wasn't fully received, but Jesus Christ died so that they would receive the inheritance, what had they received? Well, they had received the promise, the same thing that Abraham had received, and they had become heirs according to faith and according to that promise. Look at Galatians chapter 3 and 29. Because they were in Jesus Christ, who is the seed of Abraham, who had received the Abraham, Abrahamic inheritance, who had already received all things and all power and dominion, this is what Paul says. And if, if you belong to Christ, the seed of Abraham, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Guys, what Paul's teaching that, if they belong to Christ, then they were the true seed of Abraham and they had received the promise of their inheritance. They were made heirs of that inheritance. And like Paul teaches in the next chapter, just because they were heirs didn't mean they'd already received the inheritance. Because Paul says, look, the, the heir can be a child, but he doesn't yet receive that inheritance until he's mature, until he's full grown. And what we've already seen in the book of Galatians is that they were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, but they had not been made perfect. Paul says, you foolish Galatians, having begun in the spirit, are you being now being made perfect by the flesh? Galatians 2.21. See guys, they had received the promise of the inheritance through faith in Jesus Christ. They had become heirs of that promised inheritance. But, they were not yet perfect. They had not yet received their full inheritance. And as we will show next video, that inheritance, that perfection, which would be their righteousness, would come through the establishment of the new covenant. And guys, we'll get to that next video. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time and appreciate you tuning in. And we'll see you next time on Answers on Eschatology. Bye for now.